He was named one of Comedy Central's new faces to watch. Has been featured on season one of Kevin Hart's Heart of the City. Please welcome Josh Johnson. I grew up in Louisiana. Yeah, see. <laughs> Whenever I do that, people, some people will woo, but that's for New Orleans, <laughs> which is the best part. Like, New Orleans to Louisiana is like if you had the most beautiful blue eye, but your whole face was fucked up. Like, that's what... <laughs> That's what it's like being from that state. Yeah. <laughs> but I did, I, I grew up in Louisiana and when I was 13 or 14, uh, my family got the first like home computer. Like still, like it looked, had a whole city behind it with a big monitor, but like it was a computer. And my mom was really excited because it meant now I could do my homework at home and I wouldn't have to stay at the library for hours and I was excited for different reasons. <laughs> right, and like, I don't know if I'd scream it, but I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I had a couple, I had like, I had like the bunch, you know, like, like, like the, the type five, but like not a lot of friends to do things after school with or anything. I wasn't particularly athletic, so. After school, I just had to go home. Like, <laughs> if you're not gonna play a sport or you're not gonna like join a like a mathletes club, you have to go home. We can't just have you sitting here with the other kids that are doing things. <laughs> and so, so I went home, and I was also at a point in my life where I was being left alone at home for the first time. So I was 14, and my mom's like, "Look." If you, if you die while I'm not here, you were never gonna make it. So like, <laughs> you need to start fending for yourself. You should know how to use an oven, you know? And so I would get home and I'd beat my mom home by like one or two hours, you know? So I was just me at home alone with, with the computer by myself for like one or two hours. And so I discovered Craigslist. <laughs> And I just, I was so fascinated, like the fact that you could look up all these like misconnections and, and like favors and, and like odd jobs and renting apartments. So I would just get home from school every day and just like read Craigslist. It's nonstop, just like, like every fast, like men seeking women, women seeking men, like, like every, part of Craigslist, I was, I was just like people selling their car, but like trying to give the backstory so it, they could use words to somehow overshadow the beat up car that they were trying to sell. It was like, there's a lot of history behind it because you don't know this car was the car that like Snoop Dogg rode in the back of, in once and he, he got really sick and threw up. That's why there's that stain there. It's like a Snoop Dogg stain that like no one would have got otherwise. Like you can only get a Snoop Dogg stain in this car. And so I would do it, I would just read Craigslist every day after school. And I didn't tell anybody I was doing this, but I would be like really excited to get home. Like I'd just be, <laughs> be like, oh man, where are we gonna have now? Cause like some, I'd even read the misconnection and be like, hey, look, I met you at, and we were at a club and you had, you had like hair and stuff. <laughs> And I remember you had one eyebrow, which is weird they didn't start with you had one eyebrow. You had the thing that most people have and one eyebrow. And we just had a great conversation. I couldn't really hear you, but like I could feel you. And so if you reading this right now, hit me up. And so naturally, I, I, when you're 13, 14, whatever, you're not, you're not a, a person yet. So you're... <laughs> kind of a monster. And it wasn't long before I came home reading Craigslist every day before I decided to get involved. <laughs> and so I started just like starting these correspondence with people, you know, like on misconnections or whatever. I'd pretend to be the person that they had the conversation. So I was like, yeah, baby, I got one eyebrow and the other one coming in, you know? <laughs> And 
and I was just, I was doing it every day for like months. And then some people, I would give myself away by being too into it and they know it wasn't the person and they wouldn't respond. But other people, we get like a long correspondence for a while. And I remember one day I was, you know, just sitting at, at the computer, just really excited to get into it. It was just a Tuesday and <laughs> I didn't have anything else to do. And this was a two hour window day, not a one hour window. And so on this particular day, I was just scrolling through all of Craigslist and I saw <laughs> that there was an ad. The ad just read, join the KKK. <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> and so naturally I was like, dope. <laughs> and so I started a correspondence with this dude named Dale. And like, I, I felt kind of bad cause like, if you're hurting that bad in 2004 for recruitments that you need a Craigslist ad, then we must be making progress. <laughs> like, you know, the world's getting better. And so uh, I talked to Dale a little bit, you know, just emailing back and forth. I was like, hey, what's up? Um, I'm white. <laughs> You wanna chill sometime and talk to, and by chill, I don't mean the way black people use chill. I mean actually go somewhere cold and uh, hang out together as uh, friends. And to my surprise, the next day, I had an email from Dale that was like, hey, great to meet you. You seem like a cool guy. And. And all of our correspondence for the first couple days was like the most basic, just like, oh man, you like Star Wars too? So do I as well. Like I, just, I couldn't be natural on the thing. Like I was so nervous every time I typed. But then uh, once we really got like a, like a rapport built up, he was like, we should, we should meet. I want you to meet the, the brothers. And I was, I was like, that sounds great. <laughs> And I grew up in uh, Alexandria, Louisiana, which if you've never been there, don't know what it is, you're doing fine. So I guess you don't need to. Um, but there's this place, there's this uh, bar called Finnegan's. And I was like, hey, Dale, look, just meet me at Finnegan's and we'll sit down, we'll have a chat and everything. And then if you really like me, you can introduce me and the other brothers and we can all be a family. And so the next day comes, and naturally I don't show up. I don't want to die. I was never going <laughs> to. So that's, that'd be insane. That, no. <laughs> but he hits me up the next day after school. Uh, and I should point out that, like, for two weeks, I was running home mainly to talk to Dale. I wasn't even reading Craigslist anymore. <laughs> I had six friends, and Dale was one of my best ones. <laughs> but I, I came home the other day, and, 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 and he was like, hey, I went to Finnegan's, and I waited on you, and you didn't, you didn't come, man. Why would you stand me up like that? And I was like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. And so I came up with an excuse, and this is, this is like, you know, we're talking 2004, we're talking before like everybody had a cell phone, you know? So it's like some people still, you know, didn't, just didn't have a cell phone and they made plans and they went out and they did them, you know? Um, and so if there was a hiccup, you just had to roll with it because you couldn't just text someone like, hey, I'm totally not gonna abide by the plan now. I've chosen a different plan, I'm letting you know now. So for a week, I just like kept getting Dale to eat and shop alone. Like, 
And each time I had a great excuse. Like each time I was like, oh, my mom fell and like, like I, I just had to be there with her and everything. And every day he understood. And he was like, you know what? You did the right thing, brother, you know? <laughs> And I, and I remember one day especially, he was particularly upset because he, he had come home, obviously come home, emailed me that evening, but I didn't see it till the next day. And, uh, and he was like, you never came to Target. I was in Target by myself for three hours. I bought a popcorn maker. I don't even need a popcorn maker. I was just in Target by myself and bored. And I was waiting on you. Now I got a popcorn maker in front of me. And what are you gonna do about this popcorn maker? And I was like, Bruh, I'm so sorry. And by bruh, I do mean shorthand for brother, not the way that black people use it. Um, I'm so sorry. I just, uh, you know, my, my girlfriend, uh, she tripped. And the, it was always women falling. Like, I'm, I'm surprised that he never caught on. Every time it was like, oh yeah, my great aunt just hit a stair. Or like, I, like just the worst lies. It was a 14 year old idiot. And, and I, and even now, I'm like, why? Like, I was alone with a computer, and I just catfished the clan. <laughs> I can't think of anything dumber or more da Porn would have been better. <laughs> porn would have been normal. You thought you were about to hear a story about porn. Yes. Yeah. And instead, it just took a wild turn. And then finally, uh, you know, after, I think, it was, I think it was a week and a half, he was very resilient. Uh, they must be. <laughs> hurting for numbers <laughs> because after a week and a half he was finally like okay you know what ball's in my court now i'm gonna set a time i'm gonna set a place and if you don't come then don't ever talk to me again <laughs> and i was like fair enough okay you've been so patient with me i really just want to be part of the brotherhood just let me know where i need to be and then he picked Finnegan's again. There's not that many places to go in my town. <laughs> and naturally, uh, I didn't show up. I didn't hear from him again. And I've noticed this thing, this trend online uh, that's kind of disheartening, where like now people are being called racist, but for like nothing. Like actually not. Like, I'll, like I'm petty, so I'll read the whole thread. And I finish... <laughs> the entire thread, I'm like, oh, that was it? I don't even think that's a thing, you know? Like, <laughs> like, oh, you said this, you tweeted this one thing one time, you must be a racist, or like, you vote this way, you must be a racist. You're a whole racist by a person who doesn't know you. And I'll tell you, as like a black dude that grew up in the South, I don't think you're racist until you go to your second clan meeting, all right? <laughs> like, <laughs> look. <laughs> Cause, Cause maybe the first one, maybe your buddy Dale just invited you to a barbecue, all right? Everybody loves barbecue, okay? You get there, there's delicious barbecue, there's dry rib, there's sloppy, it's all happening. You see somebody put on a white hood, you're like, I don't know, the costume barbecue, that's a little odd. But you just keep eating, there's corn on the cob, there's collard greens, there's brisket, there's pulled chicken, it's all delicious. And then there's a burning cross in front of you and you're like, I'm already here. <laughs> I say this because it happened to my friend Jordan, okay? He accidentally went to a Klan rally because without knowing what I was doing, my buddy Jordan, who was about three years older than me, actually met Dale. <laughs> and got invited to a barbecue. Turns out Klan rallies don't just start, they ease you in with a barbecue. And he was like, I know what to do, I ate all the food, I can't miss the meeting. So he stayed for the entire Klan rally and uh, went home immediately, called me, I came over, we talked about it. Turns out a Klan rally is exactly what a Klan rally is like. There were no spoilers. <laughs> but just past his head in the kitchen, I could see a to-go plate. <laughs> and I was like, Jordan, 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 <laughs> are those Klan ribs? <laughs> And he was like, yeah, and I was like, can I have some? <laughs> and
and it hurts me as a black dude that grew up in the South to say that the Klan makes the best ribs. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what kind of rub that is. Who would have known that you can't taste racism? It's delicious. Okay, it was to the point where I was like, I think you need to join. I need these every Sunday. These are amazing, guys. Guys, I'm Josh Johnson. Thanks so much. Thank you.